Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to uh, merge together and, or, or synchronize audio with video. Um, in this instance, what we've done here is, uh, this is shooting a narrative uh, style film, short film, uh, and I've got two folders here from scene number 17 here, and we're going to sync this footage here to the audio. So I'm going to open up my video folder here, and it opens it up, and it's in list view. I'm going to turn it into icon view, and pull this little thing here and say uh, list view sort. I always kind of try to keep that on, on, uh, on the list view sort here, so organize it in alphabetical order. Increase my thumbnail size here, and we've got a whole bunch of footage here. And these are video clips that were shot on a red camera. These are proxied files, so these aren't the actual red footage, but uh, they will sync. I can reconnect these to the, the, the original red files later. But right now, we're going to be syncing these proxy files, which is these video files, with our audio. Uh, so, the way this was done is uh, on a typical narrative uh, film shoot, you have a camera department and you have a sound department. The camera department is responsible for gathering images, and the sound department's uh, responsible for gathering the audio. And they're done it with uh, two different devices. The red camera in this instance was not used to capture audio. Uh, it did capture some audio. It's, it's, uh, th those cameras can capture audio. They can capture what they usually call reference audio. It's going to be unusable audio. But the sound department, they actually have a boom and an audio recorder that captures this. Uh, I'm going to open this up. And they captured uh, all these audio files here for all the video files. And they shot them at the same time. But the way that synced up, let me open up a clip here. At the beginning of the clip here, you'll notice we've got a slate. We've got what's called the roll number here. This is the this was the fifteenth solid state card they were using to put uh, to record footage onto. But uh, right here we've got a scene number. This is a scene number right here. It's called this is scene seventeen, and this is shot A basically. Then the whole sh shot becomes scene seventeen A for this particular shot. So with that slate, you notice the slate is open right now. Uh, the the camera is going to roll, and then the sound is going to roll at the sa at the same time. And then the sync marker here claps together, so you have a visual of the slate actually marking uh, or coming together on a single frame and you're going to use that uh, and you're going to go to the audio and find that exact time when that slate hits to sync that up. For example here, let's scroll through this and you notice right here, I'm going to arrow right here go forward and you'll notice there's a point where that slate finally meets right there and that is our sync marker visually. Uh, where you're going to find that on audio so we go into audio, and this is probably not the same clip, but let me just grab a clip here. You'll notice you can see kind of a sync marker right there. And they'll call the shot beforehand, so the person that's hitting that slate together yells um, yells the shot number. Death of me, scene 17, take two, camera B and A, Abe and B. So she reads the actual slate there, so we got an audio reference. We know that this shot lines up with a visual. Marker. You guys see that? Yeah. And then you hear the clap mark right there, and that's the sync marker. But I know that this audio clip doesn't belong to that clip because she said this is scene 17, not 17A. So each shot, each new setup has its own uh, unique number, and that is displayed on the actual slate. So what I'm going to do here, let's let's get started. We're going to start syncing these together and prepare these to be edited. Uh, I'm going to tilde over this, hit the squiggly key above my tab key, and I'm going to grab one of my clips here, and I'm going to create a timeline out of it. I'm going to drag it down over my new item icon and create a uh, timeline. I'm going to go back to my project window. I'm going to pull that timeline out of my video folder, drag it a little bit to the left. There it is right there, and I've got it. And it's named after the same uh, name as the clip that I dragged into it. So I'm going to delete that clip, rename this Scene 17 Sync. This is what I'm going to be syncing Scene 17 in. Now I'm going to grab my video footage. I show this as a list again, and I'm just going to grab it all. Grab the top one. I mean, if I grab it from the very top, it'll put it'll go from the top down. If I grab it from the bottom, it'll do it in reverse order. So I want to take this in an order and grab it by the top. Drop it in my timeline, and now I have all my footage in my timeline here from this scene. But I don't need the audio from this. This recorded two channels of audio on the red camera. They didn't uh, uh, kill the audio on it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lock my video. Like my video track, do Control A to select all my audio and delete, and it gets rid of it. So now, because that audio on there is doing me no good. It, the audio had nothing on it because I didn't even have a microphone record uh, uh, set up on the camera. I am going to hit Shift Plus, so I increase my track height here. And I've got all my shots in order here. And one recommendation, one thing they didn't do on this, is the very first thing that the camera sees when it hits record should be the slate. The slate should be in front of the camera when the camera, uh, when the camera operator hits record on it. And another thing here, as I move in and find the slate, right here. Notice how small it is. It's like so far away from the camera. Another recommendation I have is this uh, slate should be a lot closer to the camera when you start rolling. So the first shot, is, and let's move down here. You'll notice that that was the case later on. 
that the slate was closer to the camera, but it should be almost the full frame here showing that, that slate. Uh, so two recommendations that I have are to have the slate close to the camera so you can see, so the editor can see, so the assistant editor can see it well, and also uh, have that slate pulled in front of the camera, opened up, ready to clap uh, before the camera even rolls. So the first frame the camera sees is that actual slate, slate, so the assistant editor doesn't get confused about what the footage is or where the slate is. Okay, so I've got all my video clips put in line here. I'm going to go to my audio next. I can turn this into the list view here. I'm going to, going to go to the top one. By the way, uh, if these are stereo files, these are not stereo files, but if you're recording in stereo files, I would really recommend using it as a mono file, as a single file, because there's no point in having uh, a stereo file when you're recording with a single microphone, with a single uh, condenser shotgun microphone, because that's only a single channel. So just duplicating it onto the left and right channel, there's really no purpose in that. Uh, mono is easier to mix to left and right if you're doing uh, stereo effects or surround effects later on. But what I can kind of guess from the, these waveforms here, here's my clap right there. Here's the, here's the, the slate marking right there, most likely. So that means before it, this is probably the person calling the slate number. So let me go to my video here. I'm going to move in and find I'm going to click in my timeline and I'm going to hit plus, plus, plus to zoom up a little bit. I'm going to scroll in here and find out where that slate is. Let me, I'm going to hit tilt over this so I can see. This actually says scene 17, take one. So this shot number, this setup number is called scene 17, take one. So I'm going to move this in to where I see that slate hit. I'm going to hit L for forward or my space bar. And it's playing through, and there it is. I hit K to stop. I'm going to hit J to rewind and get it right, uh, right where that slight marker hits. J, K to stop, and now I can arrow forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right there, it claps, and that first that first part there is my marker. That That's where it hits. So what I can do here, this is what I like to do. Uh, instead of putting an endpoint on my timeline, I like to go to my timeline, shift three to jump to my timeline, hit Q. Q is going to cut and delete everything to the left. Now the first frame that the, ed that the editor is going to be looking at actually has the slate number 17 take one. It's right where the marker hits. So now I'm going to move up to my audio file here. I'm going to put it right about here, right before that person speaks. I zoomed up a little bit, plus, plus, plus. I'm going to hit play. Death of me, scene 17, take one, camera A and B, marker. Now I don't have a and I don't have the B camera here. We just ended up using the A camera footage because uh, the B was kind of worthless. Uh, did uh, the shots just didn't look good, so we're just saying. So we've eliminated that. So that's why she's saying camera A and B marker. But uh, if it's a single camera, they just usually say marker. If it's two cameras, they'll say camera A marker and clap it, and then do one for camera B marker and do one if they're in a different position where they can't see the same slate. Anyway, so I'm gonna arrow arrow over to the right here. I know this is the right shot. Scene 17, take one, and this is scene 17, take one. So I'm gonna arrow over to the right. One, two, three, and just keep going until I hear that first clap. There it is. So I landed right on the frame when I hear the first clap. Hit I for endpoint, and I set an endpoint right on that marker. Now I can hit period and drop it in on my timeline. Now this audio is synced up. So let's take a look really quick. Let's look at the actors and just scroll in and see if the actors, see if the audio lines up. Let me tilt it over this to make it bigger and... I'm sorry for your loss. And the audio matches up really well. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit arrow down and jump to the last edit here. I'm going to zoom up on my timeline here. Shift 3 to go to my timeline. Plus, plus, plus. And there's a little bit of a gap here, a little bit extra video. What I can do here is just hit W to kill the rest of this footage to the right. W and it edits it. And now this audio and this video file are the exact same length and it's all synced up. And now I'm going to continue on to the next shot. Double click on the next audio file, which is likely the next one in line. It loads it. Go to the next shot here, and let's tilt it over this. And now this is scene 17, take two. So they're doing this take. They're doing a second take on this. They got something wrong on the on the wide shot, so they're doing uh, doing it again. I think they did this four times and finally got it right. So let's do the same thing to sync this footage up. I'm gonna hit L L L forward K to stop because I just passed it. J to rewind. K to stop, and I'm gonna arrow to the right until I see that slate go boom. There it is. And right there, it is it is shut. So that's right where the marker sound happens. And let's listen to this. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to hit Q to eliminate the rest of the left. So the very first frame is where that actually hits. Let's listen to this. Death of me, scene 17, take two, camera B and A, A and B, marker. So this is uh, take two. So this is the right shot. Scene 17, take two. And let's arrow to the right. And right there is the first frame of the clap. It, I for endpoint, period to drop it in. Go down to my timeline, zoom up, and it has a little excess video. So hit W to clean that off to the right. This only works with the video, by the way. The Q and W, it won't work with the audio uh, unless they're linked. So just be aware of that. And uh, and I'm going to keep on going. Let me. I'm going to get three and four synced really quick, and then I'm going to come back and show you uh, the rest of the footage here. 
All right, I've done these four takes right here, and I want to zoom up to this one, and let's take a look at it. This time the audio overlapped the video instead of vice versa, so I can't hit the Q or the W to fix that. I'm just going to have to go here and trim this backwards uh, to meet the video if I want it the exact same length. You don't have to do that. It doesn't have to be the same length, but I, I, I like it nice and clean for the editor. So let's do a couple more here. I'm going to move into the video here where the slate hits right there. Go a little bit before, arrow into it right there that hits, and this is scene 17 alpha or 17a take one. I hit Q to delete all the excess, and now it's, the first frame is right on the on, on the clap. Gonna go to the next one. Death of me, scene 17 apple take one, soft sticks. And there's the marker, hit end point, parry to drop it in, and the audio extends past the video, so I'm just gonna trim that back, and I'm gonna repeat this process until I'm finished with all the clips. So let me hurry and finish the last couple, the couple uh, clips here, and get those synced, and then we'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, I am finished for scene 17 now. This is just one of the scenes out of the movie, but I've got everything synced up. Now we have to prepare it for the editor. So what I'm gonna do is make this kind of all cleaned up here. So I'm, I don't want all my footage in a timeline. I want these clips saved as merged clips over here that the editor can access out of, out of a scene 17 folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, go in my timeline here, hit home to go to the very beginning of my timeline. Uh, and what I like to do for merging, uh, you, can, you can right click on two clips and choose uh, merge here right there merge clips and it'll be do the same thing about and it will do the same thing as I'm going to do here but I would rather do this with a shortcut instead of having a right clip click I want a shortcut and unfortunately Premiere does not have a shortcut program for this so you have to create one on your own uh, so what I'm going to do is go up to edit keyboard shortcuts I'm going to type in my search engine here M-E-R-G-E -E, merge and you'll notice uh, there's no shortcut assigned to it so what I usually do is I there's a shortcut that's not used I, I like alt G or option G it's not one that's uh, that's used commonly in Premiere so what you need to do is click over in the shortcut area right there um, now that it's selected you click again and it, and it brings up this little box it's waiting for me to type in a shortcut I'm gonna hold down alt and hit G and it just programmed that merge clips as alt G so I'm gonna hit OK and now I have that saved as a shortcut. So now what I'm going to do, if nothing is selected in my timeline and my playhead is right here, all I have to do is hit the letter D. D will select whatever the playhead is touching. And right now it's touching both this video and audio, so I'm going to hit D. It'll select both of those. Now I can do Option G or Alt G, and it brings up this window. It says uh, Merge Clips, and it's asking what do you want to name these newly merged clips. Uh, it's got it all highlighted here. It already gave it a name, but I, it's asking if I want to change the name. All I have to do is type, the, type it in. And I like using shorthand. I like typing in S for Scene 17 space capital T 1. And this means Scene 17 take 1. Now, to use this for my next one, to, to, to get like things even more efficient here, I can do Control A, Control C to copy that name because I'm going to use this for the next clip as well. So I just copied that name. It's waiting in the paste queue. Uh, did Control A, Control C, or Command A, Command C on a Mac. And I hit OK. And it has merged this clip into an individual standalone clip with both with video and audio over here. So I'm going to hit Shift 3 to jump back to my timeline arrow down to jump down to the next clip and hit D to select the next two clips. This one I can see it on my slate right here is 17 take 2. So now I'm going to hit Alt G to merge those clips. I can do Control V as in Victor to paste and it's now I have the same name in there but this is take 2 so I arrow back to enter and now I've got take 2. And now I'll repeat the process. Shift 3, arrow down, D to select, Alt G to merge Control V to paste, and this is 17 take 3, so I arrow back, type in 3, OK, repeat the process. Shift 3, arrow down, D to select, Alt G to merge, Control V to paste, arrow back, take 4. Now the next one's going to be a little bit different, so I'm going to hit OK, uh, I'm going to hit Shift 3, arrow down, and my next one is 17 alpha take 1. So what I'm going to do is hit D, Alt G, Control V to paste, and I can arrow back and add an A onto this, and then I do Control A. Since this is a new name, I'm going to do Control A and Control C to copy the new name for the next one. Just trying to keep things pretty efficient. Hit OK, Shift 3, arrow down, D, Alt G, Control V to paste, arrow back, take 2. They didn't write it down there, they put their fingers up and showed 2 because they forgot to write it down. So OK, Shift 3, arrow down, D to select, Alt G, Control V to paste, arrow back and change this to B, and it's numbered scene 17B, take one and hit OK.
All right, so those are all, that's pretty much all done. So now I'm going to tilt it over this, make it full screen here, and I'm gonna grab all these shots here that I just merged. I'm going to drag and drop it into a new folder. And I'm gonna call this folder scene 17. And then I'm gonna send this project file to my editor. If I'm the one editing, I'll just save it and import it myself. But I also wanna clean all this stuff up. So what I can do is grab all this, all this stuff that I'm no longer using, drag it to a new folder, and just call it raw assets. And there we go. I'm gonna save that, hit Control S to save. So I'm also gonna get rid of the sync timeline. I don't need that anymore, so I'm gonna close that. So when I send this to the editor, what the editor will do is do Control I or go to File, Import, and go to File, Import, same thing, or Control I or Command I, and then it will open up this window, and what they will do is they will navigate to your project file that you give them for scene 17. Once they import that, they can uh, they can import it into a current project that they're already editing other scenes. They can import that into their project and add 17, uh, scene 17 to their project. And then all they have to do is go to scene 17, double click on it. I'm gonna show this in icon mode. And here are all my synced clips. So now they can start editing. So let's open up one of these clips here put it in a timeline, create a new timeline out of it, and I've got these two files synced. There's the marker at the beginning as we move into it, move into the scene here. We'll be finished here very soon. Uh, I'm very sorry for your loss. And there we go, the audio is synced up, we got the good audio matched up with the video, and the editor can start editing the scene. Uh, thanks for watching, if you have any questions, uh, please post them.